The world, Kosati's National Congress in Midrand has adopted a resolution which could further worsen volatile labor relations in the country. Kosati plans to intensify the fight against the state's retirement reforms, e-tolls, labor brokers and youth wage subsidies. All Kosati unions have also agreed to campaign for the introduction of a minimum wage. In his closing address, Lamini said the Labor Federation's National Congress has witnessed an end of a bitter chapter. Our reporter Aldrin Simpia spoke to Kosati President he started by asking him what he meant by an end of a chapter. We have been uh, uh, going through difficult moments. Uh, we have explained that uh, COSAD has been uh, pushed, pulled left, right, outside internally by external forces and internal uh, uh, issues. We have closed that chapter. Congress was very unanimous in uh, saying we want a united COSATU militant fighting and campaigning uh, for the issues of workers in South Africa. Uh, delegates came clear and they were very expressive in ensuring that COSATU is defended. COSATU is not going to be turned into a political party. COSATU uh, resolutions will be implemented and we dealt with a range of resolutions. A few were deferred to the Central Executive Committee and indeed we are coming out there. The CEC that we will see will develop a program that we shall take on the ground. We are not going to be talking other people anymore and I hope they don't talk about us but they focus on their future. We focus on building our COSATU. Well, during the closing remarks and during the declaration, um, it was FAO that raised this concern. And they said that it cannot be put into the declaration that we leave this Congress united. The Congress refused to allow such a closing uh, comment to define a Congress uh, as if it was divided when uh, uh, 15 out of 17 unions who were present said we are united on this program so and then the declaration. Is, so then it can't be unanimous that no 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 you should understand our democracy and FAO understands that very well actually FAO will say to you we will be working to implement the resolutions of COSATU because we are joined there we are unity shall be achieved on the implementation of the programs, and all COSATU unions are, con are committed to that. The fact that uh, uh, they had a view different from the majority is not an accident. It's what our robustness is all about, and they were not wrong to express a different view. But we are closing this Congress with one declaration, which uh, uh, FAO and all the unions of COSATU have endorsed. That's the question that I asked um, FAO yesterday, and I asked whether they believe that they still feel that they belong inside this federation, as well as Sakao. They've raised a number of issues, and always it has seemed that it's always the two unions, Sakao and FAO, who are on the other side of what the majority are on. Do you think that those two unions still have a place in, in, um, in, in the federation? And the other thing is that, for instance, uh, FAO is saying that next year when they head to the Congress, it will be put on the table whether they would consider being part of uh, that worker summit that NUMSA as well as the former General Secretary Zelinzi Mavavi has called for. Look, uh, no doubt FAO and Sakao are fully fledged affiliates of COSATU from ages back. Remember, FAO is one of our oldest unions who found COSATU and Sakao too is one of the unions that found COSATU and therefore COSATU is their home even into the future. What has been happening over the past four days has been the work to consolidate the unity and cohesion of the organization. And indeed, I'm happy that uh, they are clear not to be associating themselves with the things called the, the, the Workers' Summit that is convened by people outside COSATU. And uh, we are happy with that. As I said earlier on, building unity will not be an overnight event. We now are going to be on getting on this work and uh, along the way we shall be talking to one another. We have begun to talk to one another. If I can tell you, uh, 
as president in the previous term, I have spoken to all the leaders of all the COSATU affiliates uh, quietly as individual, all the unions, and we have been going elaborately on the issues and they saying what are the things they are making them not to be happy, what do they think can take us forward. This Congress Hence, it was not boycotted by nobody. No one was threatening to boycott except the two. Except the, the, the two no, no, no. One union, Sasau, Safpu. But Safpu then came back after you had spoken to them. You had to intervene before they came. They weren't here on the first day. Yes. So they had decided to boycott. It was only after your intervention that they decided to come. Precisely. They then came. They spent three days at this congress. So that is uh, but counting doesn't, that, them doesn't in. that concern you that you have two unions, um, Sasao Sa 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 as well as Safpu? Um, one eventually came on the second day and the other not at all. Remember, as I say, building unity is not an overnight exercise. Some will follow slowly, some will already be on board, and others may still be saying, no, 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 we don't think we are in. And I can assure you, not a single one of those unions is saying we are not in. All of them are inside. They have this feeling and that other feeling. You know, the thing of uh, 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 voting by a uh, show of hand or standing in a meeting to take a decision by a simple majority uh, still irritates others. Mm -hmm. And they would want to say that is not constitutional when it is directly in the Constitution. It will be those issues that shall be sorted as we go on. As I said earlier, we shall now focus our energy and time building COSATU other than talking about other people outside COSATU. Let's speak about the constitutional amendments that, um, uh, that some of the unions were calling for. Um, the constitutional commission has now been set up and that some of those constitutional clauses will now be referred to the CEC. Recommendations will be made and then eventually um, they will be tabled right here at um, the Congress, which will be taking place in 2018. Yes. Yep. That is exactly what Congress said. We did not deal with a single constitutional amendment and that work was uh, deferred to a, a, the Central Executive Committee to set up the committee that shall have to handle this matter. Uh, so, so, so those amendments, even when they are a concluded draft, shall be presented in that Congress because it is only a Congress, the National Congress, that accepts uh, recommendations for constitutional amendments. Uh, Mr. President, I look at that and I ask myself whether you won't find yourself running into uh, more, 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 more court cases. Like you mentioned earlier on, uh, with the issue around the expulsion of NUMSA, you said that yes, there is a decision that has been taken by this Congress, but as the courts have interpreted the constitution of Kosatu, it said that there must be votes so that you know how many people voted against and how many voted for. Don't you think that if you refer this, um, these, constitu these constitutional amendments to the CEC and then take another three years until you get to the Congress that you might find yourself running into some of these issues? Um, I think it was Pausa who mentioned that, for instance, the issue around um, poaching. And they said mm. that that won't stop, that which means mm. that uh, more unions will then be expelled. It doesn't mean that. The key thing here, because that is a product of issues of disunity, uh, which were bedeviling the organization. We, for the past 30 years of COSATU's existence, that clause has always been in the Constitution which says a decision or a motion must be voted uh, uh, and, and the vote should be by show of hands or a secret ballot. But because things were nice, and uh, things were okay. We took decisions by a simple majority uh, in a meeting because there were no serious objections. Once a decision was taken to suspend the general secretary, who then took COSATU to court using that constitutional clause, which was known by COSATU but never implemented, even when he was being suspended, he took us to court, and the court said, Kosatu, 
you may have said that you took the decision when there was a majority, but your constitution say you must vote for that decision, even if no one is opposing it, or even if the majority agrees on it. Your constitution says you must vote. That's exactly what uh, happened. And I agree with you. If we fail to deal with issues of unity and work on the foundation that has been built, it is possible that anybody can just uh, evoke something out of the Constitution and challenge a decision that is taken. Let's speak about um, the NUMSA expulsion. Um, it was quite a heated debate, and uh, there was a suggestion that came from Pop Crew, for instance, that NUMSA be expelled permanently, and you am, uh, and you am opposed to that. They said that no. NUMSA can be allowed back in if they would adhere to the constitution of Kosatu. Is there any, any, any clause in the constitution of Kosatu that says that an expelled union cannot be invited back? Look, every union that uh, meets the criteria of the constitution of Kosatu has a right to apply to be admitted at Kosatu. So NUMSA can apply to be admitted at COSATU as long as they meet the criteria. So NUM was correct because that has been the line. We're saying NUMSA remains expelled for the processes of the appeal to be followed, but as long as NUMSA continues to violate the constitution of the federation or not to comply with the constitution of COSATU, NUMSA remains outside. And that's the message we're sending to uh, their members. And I hope that uh, they listen to that. Because li literally here, uh, members were misled by leaders on this one. That's the painful part of this whole thing. And I hope as time goes on, they shall be working to correct those things. But less I talk about them and talk about COSATU, but the better. Did, would you hope that NUMSA would apply and ask to, be, to form part of uh, COSATU again? I hope so. I hope so. But they have to accept that COSATU has a constitution that needs to be complied to. Okay. And let's speak about your closing remarks right now. You mentioned the, the issue that the minister, Minister Mildred Willifant, yeah. uh, um, raised yesterday. And that's around the issue around the investment arms of COSATU. But more specifically, and maybe we should listen to this, um, this, this clip that the, minister, uh, that the minister spoke about yesterday, around the issues around um, COSATU's investment arms. And you are saying that the union that the minister is referring to is not a COSATU union. But let's listen to the minister sure. quickly. The leadership must really start to investigate some of the affiliates who have partnered with the same companies that are using labor brokers as part of investments. Because if we don't do that, we will always have this complaint to say government has not banned the labor brokers uh, while at the same time you are working together with those companies. Well, listen to that. She mentions some affiliates. And then I think part of that clip as well, she also asks you, Mr. President, should I say which unions this is, these are? I think she said which union this is, but mm -hmm. here she's, she mentions some affiliates. Um, how do you then dispute that when she says some affiliates and she asks you, should I mention which union it is, and then you tell her not to, not, not to mention which union that is? Yeah. Look, firstly, you must take note that she says COSATU must investigate. Don't, don't, don't miss that point. She says we must investigate. And, 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 and I think we should welcome uh, that. Uh, and secondly, I think the media took a pot shot on COSAT on a false issue because uh, the minister did not say which unions are those. 
so says investigate to find out whether there are unions in Tenali no, 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 no. which she, are no, doing no, no, this no, thing. No. Now the media but, but Mr. goes President, out. No, Mr. President, she says some affiliates must be investigated. Some affiliates are associated with these labor brokers. Some affiliates have investments in these labor brokers and interests in these labor brokers. I don't and then the other thing that I find quite, uh, quite, quite intriguing let, though. Let me not get you to run away with that one. As long as you miss the meaning of investigate, you will come to a conclusion that the minister says, indeed it is confirmed that that is the case. She says we must investigate so that we compare the facts that she has. And that has not happened, which is why I was cautioning the minister to avoid a situation where the minister would say things in the meeting when at the end and after such an investigation is proven to be wrong. Let me give you the example. Kosatu's investment, Kopano Kimatla, have a shareholding agreement or association with a company called Rubex, which is in the construction, which constructed some of the e-tolls in, I mean, the, 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 the highways in this country, which are now uh, being uh, e-tolled. You hear me? An investment company, of course, Satu, has a shareholding. How much the shareholding is another matter. But then that company invests or does business uh, in the construction of the, uh, the, the, the roads. When that matter comes up, and I suspect the minister may be referring to that issue. When that matter comes up, when the debate on the Itols is in, it is coming, Kosatu is also benefiting from Itols because uh, Kosatu uh, is getting money out of the Itols, which we disputed. Firstly, we did not know that was the case. And when we went to check with Kopano Kimata, we find out that indeed that is the case. They have a shareholding with this company. But did this company uh, benefit on the Itols? It has got nothing to do with the Itols. It's just constructed the road, left it, and government or any system is used to then pay for the Itols. That's one example. We, we, we did explain this to Congress because the minister was putting us into that type of a situation. I want to tell you now, if you probe the minister further to then tell you where the company, I mean the trade union is, she's going to say that is not a trade union within Kosatu. I guarantee you. But, but, but you, you're mixing the two issues here. She speaks, first of all, about unions, affiliates of Kosatu, which have interest in labor brokers. The issue around Kopana Kimatle, that's a separate issue, yeah. which, you, which you also yeah. mentioned. What I'm trying to get to is that when the minister says, should I mention which union this is? And then you tell her, no, do not mention that union. Because would it would union? be wrong for the minister to well, can, can, you, can you tell us now with that it, union It is? would be wrong for the minister to have no confidential discussing with the leadership and expose something that the leadership perhaps could have clarified to her if it was exposed to that information. You don't do that. You're creating a situation that will be untenable. I cannot tell you there is no union of COSATU that I know which is investing in labor brokers until I'm shown what that union is and until the minister say which that union is, I have no knowledge of any COSATU union. But, but Mr. President, why are you so concerned and why do you decide to um, gag the minister on saying which union it is when it's not a union that's affiliated to COSATU? Why does it concern you so much about mentioning which union that is? Look, I'm not concerned about which, you know, that thing will come will come out can I ask you of this? which union is going to be. The minister should furnish us with the information. Then we'll come back to you and say, indeed, the minister was right. As things stand right now, and having checked with our union leadership, there is no such an information. Can you tell us who the union is? It's not a COSATO affiliate. I'm not going to talk about but other you, but, people. But you know which union it is. I know very well which the union the minister is referring to. It is not a COSATO affiliate. And you are concerned that the minister raised this during a COSATU Congress and it gave the impression that it is a COSATU I'm very union. concerned about Have you that. spoken to the minister about we that? We will engage with the minister. I think she was indeed uh, uh, stretching the point too far. She has to confide in us 
If it is us, we'll then come back to you and say, indeed, the minister was correct. This is a COSATU affiliate that is involved in this, and it is wrong. It's not supposed to happen. Okay. But let's move on to some of the resolutions that um, COSATU has taken um, over these four days. One of those is uh, the complete ban of labor brokering. Again, it's an issue. It's an issue that has been there since, uh, if I'm not mistaken, since 2012, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but it's an issue that has been there. And again, Kosato is calling for the total, for the total ban of, of labor broking. What would you do differently now over the next three years when you report back to the next Congress in 2018? Actually, it's even older than 2012. Mm -hmm. It's uh, in the 2015 plan, which we was, was adopted in 2003. That matter is there which tells you that for that long we've been fighting this issue uh, against labor brokers. We continue, we have reaffirmed that uh, resolution of COSATU and I've said in the beginning, our unity in action is the program of our federation implementing, addressing these issues that uh, workers are faced with, the e the labor brokering, the fact that workers uh, have no national minimum wage, the fact that uh, uh, the, there is a threat to the retirement uh, savings of the workers in South Africa, we shall be going to the ground to deal with those issues. Okay, and um, as a last question, this was an issue that was raised by Satu as well, and it is the issue around um, the ANC See succession debate. Such has been clear that they are not opening the debate. But um, the Federation has taken a decision right now that the ANC should stick to the principle of the deputy president of the ANC becomes president. That's an ANC principle. Look, if, if, if you look into the declaration of, 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 of Kosatu, you are again uh, not reading that declaration point correctly. Because if we saying let there be a, a observance of the principle of uh, how leadership is dealt with in the ANC. You must not start in 2007 mm. or start in 1990. You must start from 1912 when the ANC would have elected leadership. If you do that, you will realize, one, that it has happened that in the leadership debates or discussions within the ANC, the deputy has become the president. Mm -hmm. But you will also find out that it has happened in the history of the ANC. The deputy has not become the president. So, so, so if you're talking the tradition or the principle, be holistic about that so that you don't confuse. But what is key here is that the Congress says the Central Executive Committee must manage how it approaches this matter because we have agreed in 2011, I mean in eight, that uh, what we did in 2005 Central Committee and in 2007 building to the Polukane Conference of the ANC was unprecedented, informed by certain mm. circumstances. And we said we are not going to be taking it as a practice to do that on the leadership of another uh, alliance partner as we expect them not to do it in the ANC. So we have that resolution. It continues to say, should there be similar circumstances, we may be forced to do that. The CEC of COSATU has got to be the arbiter that makes such an assessment if we discuss leadership of the um, issues of the alliance. So uh, the CEC has been mandated by Congress to take guard of this debate, and we will do so in a principled way, respecting that there are decisions, there are structures of the ANC and the SACP, respecting that uh, uh, those are the structures that are of the independent organization. So uh, I hope that matter will be managed well. The media must not therefore conclude, and I'm not saying you're doing so here, must not therefore conclude that the Congress has therefore now taken a particular view on specific individuals. Because comrades were very, very clear that we are not talking anybody's name, we're just talking the principle, and we are asking the CEC to manage this matter. Uh, what, what you, sp you, sp you speak about um, before 2008, that's before 2007, before yes. the Bulukwane conference. Um, there were some issues, obviously, that Kosatu wasn't happy about. They, ac they campaigned actively to get President Jacob Zuma to become the next president Correct. of the ANC. 
right now, if you look at the current leadership of the ANC, are you okay with the current leadership of the ANC and you feel that the ANC should observe the principle that um, Kosatu has says it must be observed that the deputy president becomes the president of the ANC? I'm not going to follow into your line of uh, 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 putting the question. I'll simply say, Kosatu, in managing this issue, has to be guarded and guided by its own principles in a track, I, I am dealing with issues of leadership in Kosatu, leadership in the alliance partners uh, as the organizations. Uh, we are not going to now, as I come from this Congress, the newly elected, now hold a view of whether the current leadership of the ANC is uh, this or that or failing to do what or what. Because the CEC has got to have that informed discussion. Once they come to a view about that matter, then I will be able to pronounce with the collective of Kosatu.